Hello, this is Mark Sawatka, the General Secretary of PCS, sending all members this updated video message to bring you up to speed with what the Union's National Executive Committee has decided today at its meeting on our campaign to get justice on pay and pensions. Now, a number of weeks ago, we reported to you that in a consultative ballot, you'd voted in record numbers to support our pay claim of 10% for national pay and conditions to make sure we had equal pay for work of equal value and to get the 2% that you have overpaid towards your pension refunded to you, backdated to April 2019. We reported to you that 98% of members had endorsed that claim and nearly 81% of members voting had indicated you'd be prepared to take industrial action if the government didn't listen. Since that time, we've been working tirelessly to persuade Cabinet Office and Treasury officials, as well as government ministers, to do the right thing on your pay. After all, you helped keep this country running during a COVID pandemic and your reward for that should not be to now take the single biggest drop in your living standards since records began in 1956. Unfortunately, the government is refusing to listen. I can confirm to you that in all of the meetings we've held, including one I have personally held with the new Cabinet Office Minister, Heather Wheeler, the government has not only refused to meet our pay claim, They've also told us that they will refuse to give us any of the money back that you have overpaid in your pension. On average, that's over £500 a year for PCS members. But to make matters worse, they've also now confirmed that they intend to come back to the issue of the Civil Service Redundancy Scheme to make cuts to your entitlement to redundancy pay in the event that you lose this jo your job. Now, they last tried that in 2016, and the cuts they pr proposed were for 33% reductions in the money you were due. Now, it's not a coincidence that they've told us they want to make these cuts at a time where Jacob Rees-Mogg is calling for over 65,000 jobs to be lost in the civil service itself. So we cannot let this stand. We now need to listen to the mandate you've given us and try to organise a campaign to put pressure on the government. So your elected leaders, your National Executive Committee, has been meeting over the last two days to make important decisions. And the first thing I want to confirm to you tonight is that we have formally decided to register a dispute with the government and all of our employers over the question of your rights to a pay rise of 10%, over your right to ensure that you get back all of the money you've overpaid if you're in the Civil Service Pension Scheme, and over your right to have no cuts in the Civil Service Redundancy Scheme at a time that the government is proposing to make tens of thousands of people lose their jobs. That trade dispute will now be registered and we will be writing to government ministers and seeking meetings over the coming weeks. But we know, given what's happened in the last few weeks, that a letter and a meeting alone is not going to change the government's mind. So we've also decided over the last two days another important thing. And that is we must now make the case to move towards statutory ballots for strike action across large parts of PCS membership in order to put pressure on the government. So I can tell you now that next month, when our annual conference meets, which is made up of representatives from every branch across the whole of PCS, we will be asking delegates on your behalf to endorse a strategy that moves us to industrial action ballots early autumn, probably around September, following a summer of consultation with you and your reps about which areas should be balloted for strike action to put maximum pressure on the government and which areas that don't get balloted for industrial action should be asked to contribute financially to help support your colleagues who will be going on strike. Now that strategy will be debated at our conference. We are also hoping that as we take this important step that other public sector unions will be doing the same. I can also confirm that as part of our attempt to put more pressure on government, we will be urging all members and their families to do what they can to attend the TUC's national demonstration in London on the 18th of June around the cost of living crisis. So my final plea to you is this. Now that we're proposing this strategy to your representatives, it is important that you get involved. You will shortly be getting details from your local branch about meetings being arranged to ask you how they should vote on your behalf at conference. Make sure you attend those meetings. Make sure you look out for PCS literature and communications. We'll be asking you your opinion. You'll probably be getting telephone calls, texts or emails. It's important that you tell us what you think and that you tell us if you agree with this strategy. 
And finally, if we're going to be successful, we're urging everyone to not just get involved in our campaign, but to urge any colleagues you know who are not members of the union to join PCS and for you to consider yourselves to get more active. At the end of the day, none of us want to be organising a ballot for industrial action, but all of us understand you cannot sit back and see a historic cut in you and your family's living standards. 10% is deserved. You cannot sit back and let the government force you to overpay each and every year at least £500 for your pension that they know you are overpaying. And you cannot stand back and allow the government to cut your redundancy terms by up to 33% at a time that they are proposing to make tens of thousands of people lose their jobs. If we stick together, if we participate in this campaign, we can win. So make sure you get involved, make sure you talk to your local reps and look out for further information over the summer. Thanks very much.